Welcome to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato. Right over there on camera, you can see or you can hear Mary Gamble, my colleague, co-host and executive producer. Mary, are you feeling the leadership vibe today? I am feeling it just deep in my core. It's great. It's great. It's always so much fun talking about leadership, getting to talk to such great guests. You never know what topics are going to come up. And in between us, by the way, is our good friend Ira Robbins, who's the president and CEO of, over at Valley Bank. By the way, the brand, there's been a brand. Mary will tell everyone about our funders and where to find us in just a second. Mm -hmm. the, the brand right now of Valley is Valley. Is Valley. That's it. That's we it. That's all you uh, need. We've gotten rid of Valley National Bank as a brand and simply went to Valley. And by the way, since we're uh, plugging brands, let's make it clear, Mary, that uh, this program has been sponsored by such folks as? Uh, New Jersey Resources, uh, Prager Metis uh, Accounting Firm. We have Gibbons as well. A great and law firm. Absolutely and by great the law Prager firm. Prager Metis, a terrif terrific accounting firm. And, and consulting uh, firm. Who mm -hmm. else? Uh, and also, too, we have the uh, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. Greg Lollaby, who's been on this Greg program, Lallaby. check out the uh, best. past edition of Lessons in Leadership with Greg yeah. Lollaby. Yeah, and the list goes on. RWJ Barnabas Health, and then we have MD Advantage. So just a lot of great folks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Ira Robbins is the CEO of over at Valley. And uh, tell folks, Ira, the footprint of Valley. So Valley is a, we call ourselves a local bank. We grew up in New Jersey in 1927. Uh, today, we have offices in New Jersey, New York, including Long Island, Florida, and Alabama. Let's do this because uh, full disclosure, uh, be mostly because of Ira and, and his colleagues at Valley, uh, Mary and I, through our company, Stand and Deliver, do a leadership academy at Valley. We're really at the top people. The high, we're high pose, exactly. high potential folks. Yvonne and the team, the great uh, HR team, over there, um, identify high potential people. Let's talk about that. Whether it's called a Leadership Academy, whether it's our organization or any other that you bring in to do this, why is leadership development, particularly for those who have high potential, so critically important for an organization's success? Talk about it, Ira. Yeah, and you, you mentioned a few different structures and programs that we have within the organization. Ours is only one. Yours is one piece of it, but I think your piece is unique in that it's customized right, to select individuals. And I think one of the challenges with leadership is, is it's not a one size fits all approach. And I think being able to have customized uh, techniques and customized evaluations, customized strategies for each of our employees is important and critical to their own individual development. And your, your stand and deliver groups approach to that, I think is important to where we're, we're going. But the other part of that, and it's interesting, I have so many offline conversations about this. <clears throat> I started working with Ira, I'd say about a decade ago. Yeah. How have you changed in the last 10 years as a leader? Hopefully matured a little bit, but I think probably empathy. By the way, he's one of the youngest CEOs <laughs> in the country. Go ahead. I think empathy is probably the, the, the biggest self-development. And I think it's one thing you can read about in any book, but you really have to believe it and understand who you are and go through experiences in your life to, un to understand. Define empathy from a leadership point of view. People have different definitions of it, so go ahead. Look, I, I think empathy first starts with understanding those around you, understanding what drives and, and what's important to those around you, and then taking a real care and responsibility to making sure that you're assessing, understanding, and then helping to make those people better based on, on your assessment and based on, on a common direction as to where you could be. Without, I think, understanding and looking at people's perspectives, it's, it's very difficult to be a, a leader. By the way, if you listen to us on AM 970 or anywhere else, this is Ira Robbins. He's the president and CEO over at Valley. Um, previous position on the finance side? Exactly. That's where I grew up. Okay. That being said, the other thing I know about you from working with you is your standards are ridiculously high. How the heck do you balance this sense of empathy of where people are coming from with the fact that your standards for performance and excellence are very high? Yeah, but, but I think they're aligned. I mean, in my mind, I have empathy for those around me and empathy looks at everyone within the organization. And if we're not setting high standards, then we're prohibiting the growth of others within the organization. If we're not achieving what we as an organization should be achieving, then we're limiting the opportunities for career development within the organization. So when I look at empathy, in my mind to sit and set an ROA target, an EPS target that's up here, expect that we will deliver and execute on that ROA and EPS target. Where's the, oh, was, watch the jargon here. Sorry, Our, the, the, the finance on, comes back, so return, on, return on assets, and okay. then earnings per share would be the EPS. But financial metrics, let's just look at okay. it from that perspective. So when we said, high financial metrics, even when we set individual targets and achievements that are 
elevated compared to others. It's an opportunity for people to grow within the organization, but it's the ripple effect throughout the organization. And to me, that's part of what empathy is, is understanding that everyone within the organization, we have 3,200 employees. Empathy in part is understanding that each one of those 3,200 employees have a different home life when they go back to, have a different career expectation, have a different personal expectation. Does that matter to you? It absolutely does. You know, when we had our strategy summit uh, about three weeks ago, one these of, are big. The, uh, by the way, we I've got in front of a thousand summit. people, a and, lot of and, people and one of the questions I got from uh, one of our our employees was, "What keeps me up at night?" That and, was asked of you, and and. You can go I look at a litany of things and say, from an economic perspective, are we going to run into a recession? From a political perspective, who's going to be president? Where is the, the U.S. going Not to from? mention the stock price. Yeah. <laughs> from an investor is, perspective, right? Yes. And, and the one thing that keeps me up in, at night is we have 3,200 employees, and I honestly feel that I have a direct responsibility to make sure that I help them achieve what their individual, personal, and professional risk goals are in life. And if I don't do that, then I feel as if I failed them. And that's, that's heartbreaking to but me. But there's, there's another side to this. Ira, by the way, he, he's, for those of you, um, because I've known Ira a long time, a lot of our conversations are about the personal side, the family piece, the, how important family will always be number one to you. But the other side of this, as we, again, our leadership library looks messy here, but if you go on our website on stand-deliver.com, it's organized in our top uh, leadership books. But good to great, in this book, Jim Collins talks about getting certain people not only to sit to be sitting in the right seat on the bus the bus being driven by ira robbins as the bus driver they also have the right people sitting in the right seats on the bus however there are certain times where the bus driver has to escort certain people off the bus because the bus can't succeed and the bus is a metaphor for any organization you cannot succeed with that person on the bus so here's my question you've also let people go because Valley can't be what Valley needs to be in this competitive marketplace with them on the bus. Hard for you? It's, it's, it's miserable. <laughs> it's, it's painful. You know, these are people that we have, I personally have real deep relationships with. And that said, Martin Luther King once said, the avoidance of confrontation leads to perpetual disruption. Try that again. The avoidance of confrontation leads to perpetual disruption. And I'm sure Martin Luther King had a much different you know, uh, environment as to how he was thinking about when he said that. But I think it's appropriate for leadership also, unless you're willing to make tough decisions and look at where you want to go as an, as an organization, make sure that you have the right people getting there, then you're going to have perpetual, perpetual dysfunction throughout your organization and you're never going to be able to execute. And I think the avoidance of confrontation is something that any leader should absolutely try to make sure isn't, isn't something that's in their character's trait. Do you care if you're disliked by some in the process or not as popular with them when you have to do these things. Uh, you mentioned yeah, Dr. King. I'll mention uh, Colin Powell, who I mentioned this every other show. His great quote to me in my interview with him in connection with the book is great leaders sometimes piss people off because they do what is right for the organization. Go ahead. My, I don't think the board put me in this position to be liked by everyone. You know, when I sit there and I go to work every single day, my job is not to make everyone happy. And I'm comfortable with that. Um, you are. Absolutely. It, it's not the easiest thing It's not an act ever. that you're comfortable with. It. You have to be comfortable with. I don't with. have a choice. And, and I think, look, the, the internal part of me says, hey, this is difficult. But once again, I, I think it goes back to a, what I believe to be a moral responsibility to the people that I have working for me. And it's my responsibility if I want to make sure that every one of our employees has the opportunity to achieve what he or she wants in his or her life that I have to make that tough decision. And I'm the one that's gonna be disliked by that person. You know what, but the other 3,200 people are gonna be better off based on that decision. And that's how internally I'm able to get comfort with it. You're listening to Ira Robbins, President and CEO of Valley. This is Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato, that's Mary and Gamba. I wanna thank all of our sponsors again for helping to make this program possible. Valley being one of our most significant clients. Mary, I could see you listening oh, intently. I, I, I've been like leaning in <laughs> and I wanna in. jump in and I don't wanna interrupt. By the way, lean in by Cheryl <laughs> Sandberg. I'm leaning in. Lead, leadership library, go ahead. I did not coin the phrase. Uh, when you're talking about it, you're talking about the 3,200 employees and obviously that's your vision and that's your leadership style. You can't do it alone. How do you create a culture at Valley where those people that you um, oversee and then those people that they oversee, how do you make sure that they are instilling in themselves and then in, in fact in their team, those same values? Because that's gotta be hard and challenging with 3,200 people. It, it, it's clarity of communication, right? And, and making sure that the message that I'm intending is the message that's being delivered. You know, I, I think making sure that I'm 
setting a strategic direction that's clear and concise for everyone to look at. I also think from a leadership trait, you know, when I look at leadership skills, to me, a leader has to be humble. A leader has to be honest. A leader has to be ethical. A leader has to be authentic. And a leader has to be sincere. And in my mind, those five traits are exquisitely important for our leadership team. And if they don't have that, then I think it's going to be a real challenge for each of them to deliver the message that we're looking for within our organization. You know, you, you said humble. Connect humble with the confidence that is necessary to be a strong leader. You are confident. Absolutely. You're extremely confident. Yep. Particularly when <laughs> it's easy to be confident when you're winning and the stock price is great and everyone's on board. To be confident when things aren't going as well as uh, talk about Dr. Spencer Johnson, peaks and valleys, right? I didn't mention I use valley. that term a lot, by the way. Do peaks you? Talk valleys. about that. Why? Because without valley, there'd be no peaks, right? So the importance of our bank leading to high expectations. But I use, I quote that a lot oh, within our organization. I think that's going to be a new tagline for your bank there. <laughs> oh, I, I love right? that. Um, that being said, your confidence. I've always been struck by this because as a very, very young man, even younger than you were, you, you saw the possibility of being a CEO. You wanted that for yourself. Your confidence, to what degree does your confidence as a leader come from wrestling in college? Where did does anything have to do with sports, confidence, leadership? Look, I think for, for me, wrestling was acutely uh, impactful upon my life. I, I would say outside of your normal family, uh, right. uh, which obviously has the most impact upon you. But there were two things in my life. We grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, and my family at a young age uh, sponsored plebes uh, from the Naval Academy to come to our house. To and, right to your house? Right to our house. And what would happen was this would be uh, sort of their way of getting away from the Naval Academy, the first year uh, entrance into the midshipmen. They would come to our, our house, home away from home. But if you look at it, these were the m most high character individuals in our country. I mean, I think when you talk about ethics and sort of role models as to who you want to be, surrounding yourself with the right people, obviously, is, is a from? very important trait. Look, I think ethics, right, to do the right thing, I think is, is the, the most important trait that somebody could have. I think when I look at my leadership style and those, those sort of five taglines that I think are really important, being authentic in, in who you are were things that I learned from them. And I think having that uh, really grown out uh, from what I was able to witness as something that was really impactful to me. So that was number one. And then I think wrestling to me was an appropriate sport uh, that I thought was was different from a lot of other sports where you had a team approach. Uh, but you're out there alone, win. Ira. But it's a combination of both, right? And I think that's the uniqueness. In basketball, you can have a great game and the team loses. And you can't say that, 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 that you won in that individual thing. So you still have the ability in wrestling to say, I won, I did my part and still have hopefully a team feel as well if that team was to win. So I think you have the ability to have individual performance as well as team. And I think when you translate that into the business world, individual performance is important, but an understanding that your individual performance alone isn't mm -hmm. gonna make the team succeed. You've learned a lot about leadership and life in wrestling, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. And by the way, um, this is uh, Ira Robbins, who's the president and CEO of Valley. This has been uh, Lessons in Leadership. I'm gonna take a quick a break. I promise we'll be right back right after this. Right, Mary? Absolutely. Is that a guarantee? Ap it's a guarantee. And leadership, you got to make guarantees. We'll be right back right after this. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is brought to you by Gibbons PC, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, New Jersey Resources, and the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato with my colleague, co-host, and the person that uh, keeps me uh, doing what I need to do every day, Mary Gamba. Uh, we're here with our friend Ira Robbins, who is the president and CEO over at Valley. Before we move into the question of mergers and acquisitions and its connection to this thing called integration, integrating two cultures, two different organizations, family, work, life, balance. Do you believe it's balance? I don't think at any point in time there's a balance. <laughs> I think over a period of time there's a balance. I think you and I discussed this at one point. Um, when I think about life, it's really a pie chart. In my mind, it goes back to sort of the finance background, but is there's different slices. A slice that makes up what you want to do for work, a slice that makes up how much time you have for your kids, a slice that makes up the all important how much time you have with your wife. You separate how the much, two, don't you? I do. And then the, the last one is how much time you have for yourself. 
And in my mind, when I think about a pie, you can sit there and feel bad about yourself at any point in time that there's no time for yourself, no self-development. But the wonderful thing about looking at it from that perspective is pie charts are dynamic, right? Being that every point in time in your life, you have the ability to change what that pie looks like. And I think whenever I get depressed about, hey, there's only five minutes in a day for Ira, what am I going to do to help develop myself to help make me a better person? You know, part of that is that tomorrow there could be a half hour for Ira. And by the way, 15, 10 years from now, there could be 40% of it for Ira. And in my mind, the appropriateness of that balance needs to not look at a point in time, but needs to look over a longer period of time. How important is it having family support um, with a job like yours, being the leader that you are? How important is it to have that home base as solid as it is you know having my wife esther uh and we have we have four kids uh, having what are the them, ages again let's tell everyone uh ari's 10 levi's eight uh ezra six and zev is two so i can all promise boys. you when they get older <laughs> you'll have a lot more time for yourself so enjoy it now right i mean yes. you can attest to that yes because then they they drive places on yeah. their own they uber Ours they blow, just they blow us off yeah <laughs> so <laughs> which enjoy is breaking it. my heart our daughter olivia who's nine if she they don't want to do us that, anymore it's said, so sad it's i can't handle it but anyway that but sense. yeah it's it but having a solid somewhat normal foundation when I come home is important. Esther uh, gets the challenges you have and also you're empathetic to challenges she faces. I don't do a good enough job at all being empathetic to to what she goes to what she has to deal with. I try. By the way, I'm this sorry. This morning, as an Go example, ahead. you know, I, I got our three kids off to school. Uh, then you did? Made Esther her coffee before she was running out to go do something. Then I took care of my <laughs> two-year-old, Steve, you did got that. my two-year-old dressed, put him to school, and then went to work. Hold on. At an earlier episode of Lessons in Leadership with my colleague, Mary Gamba, one of our colleagues said, one of our guests said, that women are more natural multitaskers than men. And I asked Mary if she agreed, and she said, of course. Disagree. <laughs> Ira, uh, please make the case. Did you just hear wait, what Ira do you, did? Wait, Hold do on. you think it's equal, though? Do you think that oh, men no, and no, women are no, no. equally? Mary, stop. Don't change the question. I don't think question. gender defines don't, it. Don't change it's, the okay, question. That's good. <laughs> Ira's the CEO of one of the fastest <laughs> growing banks in the country. It. Yes. Right? By the way, you just acquired? Or a tiny bank. Okay. And before he went to work to be the CEO, not to mention come on the greatest podcast on leadership in the world, you heard what he just did. Four, four of them out the door, four Fed. Out did the door. you strategically, intentionally say that's on my agenda today? We discussed that last night and Esther made sure that was on my agenda today. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go back to say Esther made sure that it no, was on her agenda. Say, Esther delegated, uh, yeah. delegated and directed Ira. And he yes. was a good team player, which he learned in wrestling. To be on board. Look, p part of one of the things I think also <laughs> is, is, look, in any leadership role, I think time management is critical. So I probably obsess more than anyone with regarding time management. So Esther made sure I knew it was on my calendar, but I was pretty structured as to ensuring I was able to get enough work in before I had to make breakfast for my kids, before I had to wake this kid up. So in my head, whether it's written out or not, I have a really good idea as to what my day is going to look like with a real understanding, by the way, that flexibility and agility is important associated yep. with that. Uh, Ira mentioned an important theme. And by the way, I want to thank our friends at Prager Metis at New Jersey Resources at the International Organization of Operating Engineers, uh, Greg Lalavie, 825 MD Advantage, St. Joseph's Health Valley, Gibbons, RWJ, Barnabas Health, and Hackensack Meridian Health, just some of our uh, the folks who believe in what we're doing. And uh, we do leadership development there. Okay, here we go. You said perfection. I don't know if you said it jokingly or whatever. Do you actually believe that perfection is the goal versus the pursuit of excellence? And is there a difference? So I think the, what is Vince Lombardi said, right? He, he correctly understood in my mind that there's no such thing as perfection. Yet the pursuit of perfection is what leads to excellence. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that by any means. I, I, I think perfection, the definition of it, what the variables that go into it, you know, perfection that just sits there. Once again, I'll go back to financial statement that says our perfection is an ROA of 120 or performance metrics. Perfection looks like an execution of something that's flawless. I don't believe that to be perfection. Uh, you know, there's other variables that are involved, people. Uh, and, and I think when you encompass all of that in, you're never going to get to perfection for everyone. So there's no such thing as perfection. But making sure that you have the right 
uh, stakeholders, mm. understanding what's important to them and driving towards that goal, in my mind, leads to excellence. Uh, you're listening to and watching Lessons in Leadership with Steve Arabato and Mary Gamber. We're here with our good friend, Ira Robbins. This whole perfection versus excellence thing, we were doing a seminar at, at not at Valley, at another organization. And this is my concern about perfection. And Mary is accused herself accurately so of being a perfectionist. You are guilty as charged. I am. <laughs> that being said, I had a client who was supposed to give, as we do at Valley, a three-minute presentation on some aspect of the organization that she wanted to change or improve. Why the status quo wasn't good enough, what the change was, why it was important, blah, 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 blah. And she had a PowerPoint presentation. Now, I'm not against PowerPoint. I've seen it used once or twice well. That being said, the PowerPoint didn't work. The technology didn't work. And I could see she was getting very anxious. Finally, I said, listen, if the PowerPoint doesn't work, what were you going to tell us? And she said, I want this to be perfect. And I need the technology to work for me. That's my problem with the pursuit of perfection, if the definition of perfection is that. The excellence would have been, look, the PowerPoint's not working. You have the strategic agility to turn around and say, here's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yes, this is what the picture would have been if you could see the PowerPoint. It's adapting. Yeah, but, but I would argue, so, so is the pursuit of perfection wrong or the requirement of perfection? Was it, that's, is that semantics? So no, I don't necessarily think so. So in my mind, look, perfection, you can look at it from, from in the pharmaceutical business. Look, how many drugs have we found that have had other other causes. If Side there effects. If there weren't doctors, uh, my, my mom's going through uh, some unfortunate issues with, with uh, going down a path from Alzheimer's. One of the, the recent drugs that have come out uh, that may be able to address Alzheimer's was an offshoot of something else that uh, they were looking at doing from a, a cancer drug. The perfection and the ability to go down that path, I think, is really critical. But that said, the understanding that you don't need to be perfect and that there's other consequences that could be positive that come from that in my mind, is, is what leads to excellence within any organization that you're looking at doing. So, But you have to be open to those possibilities. But that's why it's not the requirement of, of perfection. Striving to be perfect is never going to happen. But understanding that in your head you're never going to be perfect and that the, the negatives, the perceived negatives that come from it could ultimately be positives and being open to that, I think that's, that's a, an attribute. But this young lady I was talking about, in your mind, you agree was too rigid. She, I think... But, she has perfection as her goal, which I don't think is any should be anyone's goal. I think the drive towards perfection is important, but an understanding that you're never going to get there, and an ability to say when you go off on a, on a different path, go with that path and don't circle back for perfection. Jump in, Mary. Yeah, I, and just what you were saying, it's a matter of figuring out, setting that goal, but understanding that perfection is not actually possible. So it is, it's hard to balance. It really, as a perfectionist myself, it's very hard because then you feel like you're always disappointed because you're not actually reaching perfection, but it's shades of gray as you go along the spectrum toward perfection. But I think what, that- But if, you've never, sorry for interrupting, you've never lowered the- you one don't of the reasons lower Mary the bar, and I work yeah. well together is because mm -hmm. we're ridiculous. This is one of the reasons why we connected with Ira, yeah. is we're absurd. Mm -hmm. we're, we're simply absurd about what we expect. Our standards are ridiculously high. And that's not, we're not patting ourselves on the back. It's just a fact. And it makes some people around us, frankly, very uncomfortable. But that's not the pursuit of perfection. It's about insisting that we be the best we can be with all kinds of variables beyond our control. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it goes back on one to accountability. And once again, you having accountability for your what your for your own self. Right. But understanding that there's implications of what you do and it impacts many others. If my employees knew that I wasn't looking to have high standards, have high expectations, right. then how would they? Wouldn't they think that I'm letting them down? We're speaking with Ira Robbins, the president and CEO of Valley. I'm Steve Autobato. That's Mary Gamba. This is lessons in leadership. Tell folks where they can find us again yeah, real quick. Absolutely. On our website, stand-deliver.com, as well as uh, they can subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Google Play, AM 970, Fios on Demand, uh, njbia.org, uh, as well as um, ROI. ROI, ROI yep, absolutely. as well. And I'd like to also thank our uh, sponsors for making this possible, New Jersey Resources, Prager Metis, um, and so many others. So. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Mergers and acquisitions. Since you've been uh, the CEO, you talked about the standard of excellence we were talking about. Have you found that it's difficult when you acquire a new bank, the newest bank again is? Or a tiny bank. 
that there are different cultures that come together, particularly you're in Florida, by the way, valleys in New Jersey, New York, Florida, and Alabama. Alabama. Okay. Do you find that it's particularly challenging as a leader to, to instill a culture of excellence and very high standards when other organizations have their own? It's, it's the blending of multiple cultures is obviously a challenge. And, and, and my experience is it takes three years with a lot of work to blend a culture and to be one and the, the same with work. Without work, it never happens. You know, going back to one of the reasons we looked at rebranding Valley. Uh, Valley was historically known as Valley National Bank. But to your point, it was really an amalgamation of Merchants Bank in New York, State Bank of Long Island, Greater Community Bank, Shrewsbury Bank, Nor Crown Bank. Then you go to Florida, First United Bank, CNL Bank, USAB Bank, which was a function of Alliant Bank and a bunch of different others. What is the culture of those organizations? And when we sat there and looked at Valley and said, you know, we had the opportunity to hit the reboot button and say, what do we want to be? What does the culture want to look like within the organization? And I remember we were looking at branding and we said, let's just rebrand the whole bank because in reality, we don't want to be Valley National Bank, just like we don't want to be the other ones. We want to set a new culture within our organization that lets everyone leave their thumbprint on what the future of Valley is going to look like. That's the brand. The question is, when these new people come in... So now we sit there and say, this is the brand within the organization. Everyone gets to leave their thumbprint on what that culture looks like. It goes back to those five, I think, core things that I think from a character trait. Being humble, being honest, being ethical, being authentic, and being sincere. So I think when we start at the top, those, I would say, are the character traits that everyone should have within the organization. When we think at the culture of the organization, what do we attempt to drive? Relentless customer approach, deepening relationships, and a commitment to the community. Your HR team is wonderful. We wouldn't be able to do what we do at Stand and Deliver without them. How important is it that Yvonne and the rest of that team are aligned with your view of leadership and excellence? So Yvonne was one of our first hires, as you know, when we started walking through what the new management team would look like. And we hired her before we hired many other of the executives. Uh, I believe Yvonne's the, the leader of the HR team. Go ahead. I believe people are, are the most critical part of any organization and making sure we had the right leadership within HR was an important component. Yvonne sits in every single one of our meetings, uh, from a strategy meeting down to a revenue meeting, down to a branch meeting. When we look at what our branches should look like, Yvonne's involved in those meetings. It changes sometimes, the role of HR dramatically. Sometimes she has something to say. Some, sometimes she doesn't have something to say. That said, indirectly, there's a value add by having her there, understanding what direction we are, who we are as an, as, as an organization, how we as a management team interact. She's without question uh, of critical importance and one of the most important executives we have at Valley. Last question. Presentation style. Uh, I'm a big fan, as you well know, the connection between leadership and the way people present and communicate. How has your presentation style evolved over the last few years? Well, hopefully it's improved since, since we've worked together. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's exceptional, but you made it a priority. I think connecting uh, with our employees, connecting with customers is really important. And for me to be authentic, uh, I tell stories uh, and I bring in my family and every single story that I tell, I think it's important for everyone that I connect with to understand who I am, to understand from a morals and values and ethics, what I believe in, and to make sure they understand that I'm no different than each of them. I live the same issues that each of them deal with and that, that's how I intentionally connect with everyone. Mary, as we uh, wrap up, what biggest takeaways for you with Ira sitting right there? Instead of talking behind his back, say it right there. There were so many, and I only have a few seconds left, but thank you for sharing. For me, it was the visual of having that pie. I've never really thought of it that way, and understanding that you can adapt how much time you have for each of those pieces of the pie in your life. So for me, that was very, very useful. So, so you know, we told Ira to come in and it'd be about a five or a 10 minute in- interview. <laughs> we kept him for over this a half is more an than hour. five. <laughs> <laughs> Ira's got all kinds of things he's got to do over at Valley. I want to thank Ira for not only what he offered on the leadership, the lessons in leadership podcast, video uh, cast, et cetera, but also his friendship and the fact that he allows us to come in and do what we do over at Valley. So thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. This has been uh, Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Mary Gamba. We'll catch you next time. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is brought to you by Gibbons PC, Prager Metis, 
Valley Bank, New Jersey Resources, and the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825.